Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and today I'm gonna to show you how you can use vocoder effects without actually having to open your vocoder. Now, of course, you will need mVocoder for this, but one of the problems I think you might have is when you use mVocoder or any vocoder, it can sometimes use lots of CPU. So I'm gonna show you a way you can get those kind of effects without actually using it. Uh, these types of effects are often used sometimes maybe in like a, that new EDM style Botanica, but also in old like dubstep, actually not that old, but uh, dubstep or that bro step, etc. You might use this on a bass or something. It creates a really interesting kind of like phasey sound that's hard to get in any other way. However, when you use a vocoder, especially with lots of bands, it can really eat up your CPU. So if you're using this multiple times, it can become a problem. However, by creating an IR of this, we can get rid of that problem since IRs use much less CPU. So let's do that. Uh, for this one, you're not gonna be using the uh, vocoder in the normal way where you're using a modulator and a carrier. You're gonna be uh, modulating it by itself. But I'll just show you what we're gonna do here. We're gonna use something just uh, as a sound so we can hear what we're doing. So I just have this snare sound like this. You can do this all inside M Sound Factory, but I'm gonna do it outside just for the people that don't wanna buy M Sound Factory just for this. You can do this with just M Vocoder. It's very easy. So go in here. I have M Vocoder. We load it up here. When I do this, nothing's gonna happen at first. You see the inputs going, but like you can't hear anything. And that's because I don't have a modulator and a carrier. I need both of them to come from the same source, and that's our M Sound Factory snare drum sound. So it depends on your DAW, but our DAW, but you're gonna to need to route uh, your M Sound Factory or whatever sample you're using into the side chain of M Vocoder. In here, it's gonna be easy. I just have this and all I have to do is here you see side chain one and two. I'm just gonna click like that. It's gonna be easy. Now, when I do it, you should hear something out of here. I'm gonna turn the volume down. Actually for this, I recommend turning on the limiter because it can get loud. And you turn down a little more. You can already hear it's affecting the signal, but we're gonna do a little bit more. Sometimes turning up the whitening will actually bring out some of the high end a little bit more. If you listen carefully, you can probably hear some of those kind of like phasing artifacts. That flapping sound. Uh, that's what we want, but you probably think like, okay, that's kind of subtle. So let's bring that up more. And what we can do is increase the number of bands. If we have it really low, it sounds like this. Barely hear anything, but let's bring it up close to a hundred. So there we have a hundred you might think like, okay, why wouldn't you just use that, you know, on your whole project or use this on multiple instances. And now if we look in here for like advanced global settings here, you see CPU benchmark. Let's see how much CPU this is using on mine. Hopefully this doesn't crash while I'm recording this. Hopefully you can still see this. Yeah, this is using 19.88% of a single core CPU. So this would be like tons of CPU just for this. But don't worry, we're gonna make an IR and we're gonna reduce that. So let's just get our good sound first. We have the bands up like this. We have our whitening up. You can experiment with different things in here. Like I like to experiment with the uh, carrier resonance. to find what sounds good to you. That's kind of subtle here. Another thing you can do is a carrier order. So having it at one will probably be more subtle. You can barely hear any difference between the dry signal. But if we move it up to 10, it's gonna get really wild, I guess. So we're getting the really hard like phasing uh, artifacts in there. Now that's kind of what I want, but of course 
adjust this yourself to find exactly what you want. Another thing to do is you might want to try this with some different sources here. So right now I'm using this drum sample, but what I might do is try it with an oscillator here and uh, let's try filter basic like this. And if I play this, let's see how this sounds with a no no low note while I move a low pass filter. That's what I want, as opposed to if I turn the vocoder off. That's giving me the sound that I want. So now that I have that, what we need to do is actually capture this as an impulse response. I'm going to turn these both off. We have our vocoder settings the way we want them. There's other things we can do in here also, like I could uh, go into the equalizer and turn down some band. So if I'm like, you know what, I really don't want like this super low end, I can get rid of that. Uh, and just by clicking and drawing here like this, if you don't like what you did, just right click, just move it over and it erases it. For us, let's just leave it how it is now. I think it sounds fine. What we're gonna do next is we need to make an impulse response. I'm gonna turn off the vocoder for a second, although we don't really have to. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just create a small impulse response using some white noise. So we're gonna go to our noise generator here. Of course, you don't need M Sound Factory for this. Just get white noise from any place. Uh, it sounds like this. You hear the M vocoders on. You hear those kind of uh, phasing laser sounds. Turn it off. Okay. It's in uh, stereo here, but I actually probably want to do this in mono. It depends on what you want. You can do it either way. I'm just going to switch it to mono though. Next thing I want to do is turn this volume down and we want to just create a, a really short burst. So I'm going to use uh, an attack modulator here. Boom. I think this goes up to negative 12. What I'm going to do here is just take this, move it up so it goes to 12 or maybe even 11. We can go a little bit higher. It's okay. And I'm going to play this. That's a little bit too long. Let's move this down. And because I know it's going to last a little bit longer because uh, that invocator is going to add some resonance in there, let's move this all the way down, maybe like 50 or so. That's good. I can yeah, actually turn this up a little bit higher. Okay. Now what we need to do is just get this out of M Sound Factory. You can record this in your DAW and export it or do whatever you want. I'm gonna show you a really easy way to do this in M Sound Factory if you didn't know this. We're gonna go in here, we're gonna find the recorder right down here in Utilities, open this. We're gonna record something here. Let's just find the path where we want to put this. You can put it anywhere on your drive. I have a little sample folder here. Uh, let's call it Folly. Uh, let's call it like White Noise Burst. What we're gonna do now is we want to change some settings here. I wanna put this record only above threshold here. I'll put the threshold at silence. Pause when plays back to disable. We don't need any of that, but we're gonna do the post processing. What this first one does is record only during above threshold means that when we hit the record, we don't need to worry about there being like a small gap before I play the note. I don't have to hit anything at the same time. When I hit record, it's just gonna wait until it hears a loud sound, then it's gonna start recording. And we want the same thing for the end, so it cuts it off. I don't want a really big gap at the end of my sound. So we're gonna do this and use trim threshold. We could use silence again, but I'm gonna move this up a bit. Let's try like negative 50 something, negative 60. So when it drops below there, it's just gonna stop recording. So now that we have that, we're gonna click record, just hit a note, it's gonna record everything, and then we're gonna turn it off. So we do that. There we go. So we should have everything saved. We can look in our folder here, white noise burst. Good. 
So that should be good. What we want to do now is we probably want to copy this. You don't have to, but I might want to use this again. So what we're going to do is just go in here, copy it, paste it. We'll rename this like a uh, vocoded IR. Now you might be thinking like, isn't that just a white noise burst? But wait, here we go. What we're going to do next is open this back up. We haven't changed anything in the vocoder. It's exactly the same. This is a really nice feature from uh, um, all the Melda plugins. Well, not all of them. I think most Melda plugins actually have this. If you look in the bottom here where it says MIDI and WAVE, what this WAVE does is you can process any type of WAVE file in this, and you can just copy it and, or say, just drag it over there and it'll process it. So we have this vocoded, vocoded IR, uh, and would put it here, wave, release it, boom. So are you sure you want to rewrite write the file? Yeah, it's okay. Boom, one file has been processed successfully. So now we have our IR. I take this off. You can use any type of, I don't know, uh, convolution loader in here. I could do this inside of M Sound Factory as well, but I guess I'll do it outside of here just because maybe it'll be a little bit easier. I need to find my reverb. Here we go. M convolution easy. We can use that since we don't need any of the other features. Here it's going to have just your normal folder here. You can click custom path and we can find where that was, but an easier way oftentimes is just to use this vocoder IR. Boom. It's already loaded up. So now bypass it. On it. So we have that same vocoder effect on there, but it's using way less CPU. We can look here and see how much CPU is this one using? 0.22%. So we save tons and tons of CPU in there. And also we can just reuse this. So each time you want to hear this kind of sound, we don't have to open the uh, in vocoder and adjust everything. You can just flip through uh, vocoder and IRs. I think what I'm gonna do is make a bunch of these, maybe make like 20 or 30 of them. So that way when I need this sound for maybe some Botanica or some kind of uh, low bass or something like that, I can just pop these on here and just find one I want. So there's lots of different uh, parameters in in vocoder. Coder to do this with, but now that we have this, we could just make a ton of them, flip through them, and find something good that we like. So we have this sound as well. Another thing I probably do here is you see it's like really cutting off a lot of the bass here. Something that I would probably do is use this inside M convolution uh, MB, and that way I might leave the bass alone while just putting this IR on the mid range and upper ranges. So that's something else you can kind of do. But hopefully, this gave you an idea of something you can do if you want that kind of like vocoded effect that you sometimes hear in uh, EDM or other things, but you don't want to, you know break your computer by putting tons of M vocoders on everything. Just create a IR file, put it in M convolution or M convolution easy. This one's free. And uh, you know, there's lots of things you can do and come up with cool effects. I'll probably do this with some other things too. I think there's lots of things you can do with convolution and I'll try to show them to you in the future. But if you like this, give me a thumbs up, leave me any questions or comments down below and be sure to check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. Till next time, see you.